My name is Jenny O'Leary. I'm an architect. Um, I'm very interested in uh, the sociological aspects of architecture and humans as uh, an integral part of their natural environment. Um, this commission came about because Cushcane received funding from the Arts Council and asked me to look at a vision for the future of this place. Um, so the exhibition is titled a Reaction to Place and that's where we started. This place emerged from the sea. It was uh, Fairview Strand was uh, once the strand that looked directly out onto the sea. So the houses on the opposite side of the street uh, to where we are, we're looking out over the, the River Tolka Delta and the bay. So we are on land that was reclaimed um, with the building of Ansley Bridge, um, which was to connect the city to the suburbs. So once Ansley Bridge was built, um, the land to the uh, west of it started to silt up and was being reclaimed slowly over time uh, but it wasn't until the late 19th century that that had been laid out fully and um, it was a difficult place to inhabit because there was a vitriol works on the south bank of the Tolka River which was a fertilizer factory essentially um, a manure works it's called chemical manure works it's called on some of the maps and that would have obviously wafted quite a lot of smells and stenches and made it maybe less habitable or less desirable. Um, it's actually referenced in uh, one of Joyce's Dubliner stories, an encounter in which the two boys uh, I saunter past it, the vitriol works. Um, so it's a historically rich area, which is really interesting when you're trying to connect to a longer timeline um, and understand our past and, and thereby project into our future. Kushkin wanted to look at a vision for a, a naturally sustainable place where dance could thrive. Um, it can be difficult to feel connected to the future. Um, there's a story that Andrew Snare Magnuson tells about his daughter, and his, his daughter is 10 years old, and she's speaking to her great-grandmother, who's 94 years old. And they're imagining a future for when that daughter is 94 years old, and she could be, theoretically speaking, to her great-granddaughter. And the era of time that that covers is a whole 262 years. And that's a, a fascinating thing to think about is, is, is how much we can affect into the future. How much that woman bo born in 1924 could be affecting 2186. That was a story that we took um, as a, a kind of cornerstone and we wanted to put the building as the daughter in the story. Um, the idea being that it's the protagonist telling lives lived. And so we took three key points in that building's life. We took 1909, which is when this building was extended beyond its original 1889 uh, incarnation to be much as you see it today. Uh, we took 2021, when it's just beginning a new life with Kush came. And so the third period is 2050. And so this is when we're envisioning a future in which uh, we hope civilization has advanced so that it, such that its values have changed. And um, there's a quote from David Gorton I'll read, which is, a civilization that secures material sufficiency and spiritual abundance for all in balance with the regenerative systems of a living earth. So that's kind of key to our idea that we would look at this place in terms of balance, regeneration, abundance, of the place that is. This vision for the future, for Kush came to consider, start making this a reality, um, there are a couple of things that um, we can proceed with straight away. So it's important to understand this place. Um, Kush came are the custodians of this place, and this is the, the realm within which they can have an impact. I suppose one of the things that we're, we've become aware of is that in urban environments, but also in rural environments, we are surrounded by man-made landscapes. And we have chased out um, biodiversity, uh, which we have paved our roads, paid our footpaths, paved our gardens, um, and all of that is having various impacts. One of those, you know, this, the reduction of soil in the environment. Soil is a huge carbon sink. Planting is a carbon sink. Um, they are ways of um, taking carbon out of the atmosphere, which is obviously good for us in the long term. So what we would like to see in the future is the depaving of, of as much as we can. Um, so anything that doesn't have to be a hard surface should be permeable. Anything that can be planted should be planted. Our buildings should 
uh, you know, be habitats for us, but also for other creatures and birds and um, you know the other animals that need to survive here with us. You know, the animals that we see crushed on the road. <laughs> you know that, and so if you were to look out the window, I would hope that you would see habitats for animals, nature, life, biodiversity, and that are. Our how we would value those things in our environment would have shifted. And um, the building itself is is a valuable resource in the project. And um, when we looked at it, there are thirty seven thousand five hundred bricks um, in in this building. And um, the building pre nineteen oh nine, those bricks came all the way from Wales. Um, and the bricks after that period came from Port Marnock. Um, and and the two tone of brick is is visible on the outside of the building. But the energy required to make those bricks um, is, is, is huge. <laughs> it is, it's a it's huge amount of resources went into the making of this building. Um, the equivalents for us now would be powering a laptop for 415 working years. Um, it's boiling a kettle three times a day for 350 years. It's uh, driving a, an electric car, powering an electric car to circumnavigate the earth ten times. And these are enormous amounts of energy that have gone into the creation of this building. And so it's about understanding the value of this building um, rather than thinking of it as something disposable that we can get rid of and, and, and just rebuild back up again. It's, I suppose, a value change to understand um, those resources. Um, the, the other thing is water became one of the themes of this place. Um, there are flooding maps, flooding photographs from 1950s uh, of the Tolka breaking its banks. And we have some um, amazing photographs from the National Library Archive of um, the streets throughout Fairview are canals. And um, we've also thought about this building in terms of the amount of water that falls on the roof. And uh, the amount that falls on the roof would actually fill this studio. It would fill a 15, liter four, 15 meter four lane pool, swimming pool um, annually. That's the amount of water that falls in this place. And it's, it's never seen, it, it you know goes straight down the drains, out towards uh, sewerage works um, and that's something we really wanted to look at and uh, think about expressing. You know there's enough water that comes off this roof um, for I think 27 people for a full year so we're not talking about actually retaining that much water on site but maybe retaining enough for 30 days um, and and cleaning it on, on site and cleaning it for different uses uh, and that would be possible and then in terms of energy um, we rely, I suppose, on the larger grid and we rely on policy change. But it may be possible for smaller buildings um, to, uh, it may be possible for a building of this scale to tap into renewable resources on site. And there's solar, is, is solar and wind, and, and there are possibilities for that. So this place is, is a place of enormous energy. There's dance happening here, um, you know, and that energy dissipates uh, without being harnessed um, and in the same way that we want to harness the natural abundance of this place that is an abundance here energy from the dancers and um, so could we capture that underfoot and and there are um, certain things under development um, pavements that can capture energy and put it in a battery and use it and and currently there are schemes in London um, that might light the street lights from people walking across a pavement or for example in Paris in the marathon uh, they managed to capture some of the the users energy uh, some of the runners energy over the course of the marathon and um, so that's it's it's in its infancy this type of technology but certainly that's that's the regenerative cy cyclical nature of things it's a, n nature has no waste you know that we would if something if energy is here we should try and capture it. And so if energy is here through the dancers, or if energy is here in the dancing, we should try and capture that energy and use it on site. The exhibition is in Kushkame's dance studio, uh, which is a, a very large room. It was the former sorting office for the post house, for the post office. Um, and so what we have done is we wanted to create immersive experience. Uh, the first thing that people see uh, are two plates. Um, the, the one closest has a model, and this is a model of a 2050 vision um, for Kush Kane. Um, so it, it is the built idea of, of all of those themes that we looked at. So the nature, 
the energy and the water. Um, besides that, beside that is a piece of work by an artist, Jack Hogan, um, he made in 2018, and it was uh, um, recording the day of a postman. Um, so when we found out that this building used to be a post office, we were intrigued about how it might have um, been used throughout the day, and this work of Jack's came to mind. Uh, so it's a flip book that um, follows a postman around for the whole day, which is a really nice kind of touchstone for history. So our themes were water, energy, and nature. And so we have projections around the walls um, that, des that describe how those aspects or how those themes feed into our development of a vision for Gush um, Within that, we've created a smaller space so that we can develop the information along those uh, three snapshots in time for the building. So the 1909, 2021 and 2050. The back of the panels is covered in mirrors. The mirrors actually came from the Agnes project initially. The idea for mirrors is we were um, looking at reusing pieces of stage set and um, often in a dance studio there are large mirrors on walls. It also turns you back towards the building. You know, it, it creates a focus on you in this space, um, which was amongst the ideas uh, about having a responsibility for this place.